Bring the music back. Bring, bring the intro music back. Please. Okay, baby. Okay, we got it. It's coming back for YG. I will watch all the videos. Okay. If you okay. bring that back. Okay, boy. Okay. Rent got too expensive. Had to leave LA. So I got into my car and I went away to the big estate. Playing poker every day. Going all in with these fish like I'm mad and all you can eat buffet. What is up you guys? Welcome back to another video here from TCH the new location. You guys really liked the 2-5 video I posted last time. My buddies Mariano and Ethan have graduated to the high stakes and left 2-5 in the dust. But not Wolfgang, we are the people's champ. We're gonna make videos of what you guys want to see. I'll play those 1025 and 2550 live streams. And I'll also play the 2-5 and make some vlogs about it as well. If you guys are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. And uh, yeah, let's get into the mix right now. We already have two drinks coming, so it's gonna be a fun video. Let's go. Our name's on the list for the 2-5 game, but there's a seat open in 5, 10, 25. So we take it and empty out our backpack, $4,600 on the table, moving us right along into the first hand where we pick up Ace Jack of Clubs. It's a three blind game. I'm in the $25 blind and a villain from the button decides to open it up to $100. The player on my right puts in the cold call and the actions on me. A three bet is incoming. I decide to go large here for $500. Given the fact that I'm in the blinds and I'd be out of position against the button, I decide to make it $500. Both players respect that sizing and we get it through $200 coming my way. With that handover, we hit and run the big game, cashing out for a profit of $40. We're finally at the 2-5 table and we raise ace-10 offsuit up from the plus one position and we get four callers. So definitely like the action a little bit better here at the 2-5 table. And the flop comes ace-king high, which should be a pretty good board for myself. Given the fact there's a few other callers in the situation, I decide to start with a check, bringing in the queen of hearts on the turn. When the action checks over to me, I bet out for $15 and YG, that awesome guy you saw in the intro, he's in the big blind and puts in the call. It leads us off heads up to the river. The river now comes the four of spades pairing the board. We have two pair aces and fours with a king kicker and YG checks it over to me for a third time. $180 in the middle and I decide to go for around half the size of 75 bucks. YG doesn't think about it for too long and he puts in the call. And uh, just like that, we are chopping up that $332 pot. I end up having to top up 500 additional dollars just to make sure I'm at the $1,500 mark. A few hands where I raised pre and then had the fold on the flop happened, but uh, no worries. We pick up seven deuce from the button and there's a straddle and a limp. So when it's back over to me, we're going to set the tone early here and show people we came to play. I decided to raise it up to $55 from the button. Let's see if anyone decides to defend those straddles. The straddle defends and the villain in middle position also puts in the call, leading us off to a flop, which comes ace jack three with two clubs and both players check it over to me. Given the fact that it's ace jack high and I was the pre-flop aggressor, I decided to go for a bet of one third, $65 going into the middle. Straddle gets out of the way. The villain in middle position folds his hand as well. I'm sure one of them had me beat because I table seven deuce and uh... <laughs> 50 a person, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> right, in this next hand, we pick up pocket queens and it's only right that we put on the straddle and we got rewarded by the poker gods. The button opens it up to $15 and the player in the big blind puts in the call. No brainer raise incoming from me. I decide to size up large here to $250. Probably could go even north of that to the tune of 300, but no worries, the button puts in the call. So we are going heads up out of position to a flop. The flop comes King Jack three rainbow and the actions obviously on me. I decided to bet small here for $175. I'll have the pocket Kings, ace King, pocket Jacks. He really should only have King Jack here as a strong hand. So I like my $175 bet and the villain in the button does as well. He puts in the call. We are still off to the turn. The turn's an interesting card. It comes the ace of hearts. And now I do something pretty weird. He has around $675 in his stack. So kind of a weird stack to pot size ratio. So I decided to jam it and stuff it in his face for 675 bucks. Not exactly sure if I love this shove. Uh, most of his hands here should be pocket pairs between like fives and tens. He could have king jack. He's not gonna have kings, aces, or jacks, I wouldn't think. So I kind of was just representing that I have a lot of the strong hands and he has a lot of the weaker hands. But when I stuff it in his face, he decides to put in the call, which is definitely not great news. We see the deuce of spades peel off on the river, really doesn't change anything about this hand at all. 
And it really doesn't when he turns over pocket kings. So yeah, he decided not to four bet me pre with the kings. Flop comes king high, he flops top set, and uh, gets the full double up through me, $2,200 going his way. Might have been able to save a little bit of money on that turn if I just check it over to him. He could bet and I could just fold. Seems kind of weak and I'll have a lot of the ace king aces and stuff like that. So interested to hear what you guys think down in the comments. Was this a punt? Was this a good play in the long run? Let me know. <laughs> oh, Let's go, baby. 700, Wolf. 700. We're flipping for his res because he doesn't want them. Focus. I don't know how this works, man. Focus. 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 When, when do they stop coming? Just try your best. Okay. Try your best. Two, four, six, eight. I have ten. Can I go first? But we, don't we need a flop? No flop. No A side. Ace. 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 Oh, oh my yeah, god, that is a good straight. Oh, oh. One card left? <laughs> Ace is home! I have, I have a spade draw too. I two pair. Alright, two pair. You're you got you're like a slam dunk. You are a, you're a really you're, good you're, favorite. Don't right. say that! <laughs> More yeah, yeah. Ten. <laughs> no, it's still on. It's still on. Oh it's my god. It's still oh. on! Oh. Holy oh. crap! Oh. Hey, it's, 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 bring it in, it's ship it. Good, it's for the good. I'm gonna make two trips. It's gonna the world see. Savine, it's going to a good place, man. We're in the gambling mood after taking down that $1,400 10-card flip with Safin. It's the first one I've ever done. He ships us all of his red chips as a needle. And then our luck seems to be turning. We three-quarter a double board PLO bomb pot. Pretty great news for us. Our stack is finally going in the right direction, which brings us along to the next hand. We have 3K in our stack, and I look down at Queen Jack offsuit from the plus one position and open it up to $25. I open it up to 25 and Safine comes in for the three bet on the button. The action's back around to me. I'll be out of position and it's not the best hand, but it's Safine. I just took 700 of his red chips. I gotta give him some action. Look at that player profile there. He's got a drink in his hand. We put in the call. We're going heads up out of position to a flop, which gives us a pair. It comes king, queen, five with two spades. Action's on me and I obviously start with a check. Pretty nice that I made second pair, but he's still gonna have a lot of those strong hands like king, queen, aces, kings, queens. I'm pretty much never gonna have those. So I start with a check. He bets out for 150 into the $375 pot. I think it's a little bit too weak just to fold on this flop given the nature of this fun, splashy game. So I toss in 150 bucks. That leads us off to the turn, which comes the seven of hearts, bringing in a backdoor heart draw. And once again, I start with a check. Now I think Safin is gonna have a lot of checkbacks on this turn. So when he decides to bet out into me for a large sizing, it's kind of a weird spot. It's very polarizing. He's either gonna have some very strong hands or he's gonna have a lot of hands like ace five of spades, ace four of spades. At the end of the day, I ultimately decide to fold this hand. I could be calling one more time and see what he does on the river, but a player of Safin's caliber is definitely capable of blasting on the river. So I would have had to buckle my seatbelts and hold on. Either way though, I mucked this hand and he's taken down that 1.1K pot. Probably gonna go towards another drink later on in this session, right Safin? All right, this is one of the hands of the night. Preston from Under the Gun raises it up to $20. I'm in the plus one position with a premium. The ladies come to play tonight, let's go. I three bet him up to 80 bucks and the action folds back around to Preston who decides not to fold or call. He's gonna four bet it in my face for a large sizing of $350. Now immediately alarm bells are going off in my head. It's not often you face a four bet in these lower stake games. And also he's from under the gun and I'm in plus one. So our ranges are gonna be very, very narrow. And he's pretty much just gonna have aces, kings and the ace king suited and unsuited variety. I think Jax is probably just gonna call from this spot. So don't roast me for this. I think this could be a fold a small percentage of the time. In this spot though, we're filming a vlog. It's against a vlog watcher and a bunch of fun people on the table. I'm not gonna fold pocket queens. I didn't drive all the way out here to fold queens, but I'm just letting you guys know, if you're trying to play optimal, queens here can be a fold. Don't roast me for that in the comments. All right, I put in the call, we defend it. We're going heads up, in position to be exact, to a flop which comes all low cards, nine, eight, four with two diamonds. Preston's first to act and he decides any small sizing of $275. I think the best play here is just to start with a call. Raising really wouldn't make too much sense. Maybe I'd be raising him under the gun with nines and eights and then calling his four bet. 
but a little bit unlikely. So I decided just to call here and we are going off to the turn. The turn now comes an interesting card. It's a seven of diamonds. It brings in the front door diamond draw, also 10 jack and five, six. Now make a straight and Preston decides to slow down and check. I'm wondering here, is he checking for pot control? Is he checking to go for the check raise? I look at my cards and I don't have a diamond in them. So I actually decide to do something interesting here and block bet the turn in order to check back the river. Yes, I'm betting out here not to go for another bet on the river. I know it's a little bit weird because I could open up the action and he could go for the check raise, but I like this play here. I don't have a diamond in my hand. What if he has a hand like ace king offsuit with the ace of diamonds? It kind of makes him play his hand pretty face up. So I like my logic of betting here, but what I don't like is my bet sizing. I think I should go around 300 to $400. Instead, I toss out a $500 chip on top of some greens. $725 is just way too large. I like my thought process, just not the bet sizing. We'll hone that in in the next video. But yeah, 725 in the middle. And Preston doesn't like that bet. I'd say he doesn't like it, not because he folds, but actually because he decides to go for the check shove. He rips it into my face for around $2,100. And it's a really gross spot, but a pretty easy one in my opinion. I know what I need to do. I have to muck my hand. I go into the tank for a little bit here. I don't know why. I think it's just because I've been running pretty bad in this session. And now I finally have an overpair and I'm forced to fold it. You can see here, if I decide to bet three or 400, does he still jam? Does he still check raise? Does he just call? That smaller sizing would have been pretty spicy, but instead he rips it in my face and I fold my cards. The nice thing about having a vlog is you can sometimes peer pressure people to show one card, if not both. That's what I decided to do. And Safina across the table yells, I think that's a good fold. At least one. I Just one. That's, uh, yes, that's not the card we wanted. We want to see the black card. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So of course, Preston being the good sport that he is, turns over the ace of diamonds. And uh, yeah, I think I made a great fold there. He either had the naked ace of diamonds, pocket aces, or maybe like ace king suited of some sort. Later on, I did in fact ask him what he had. And he was a nice guy and told me he had pocket rockets. So you see how folding pocket queens preflop there would have saved us a lot of money. Just some food for thought. Either way though, that 3.3K pot is going in the wrong direction. Oh well, at least we didn't punt off another $1,400. All right, ace nine of diamonds would have been a pretty great hand to have in the last one. We're in the big blind and we see a raise from the cutoff and a call from the button. Action's on me in the big blind and I decided to defend it and not go for the three bet this time. I toss in an additional 30 bucks and we're off to a pretty great flop, which comes queen jack four with two diamonds. I'm liking this hand. I start with a check given the fact I'm out of position against two players and the villain in the cutoff comes in for a bet of $75. The button decides a smooth call once again and the action's on me. Having just ace high but the nut diamond draw is an interesting hand. I think if the cutoff bet smaller like 30 or 40 bucks we could consider a raise here but given the fact that he bets 75 into 105 and there's a call I like just putting in the call here and hopefully picking up a diamond and coolering someone in a big hand. I put in the call and now we have some showdown value with the ace of hearts peeling off on the turn. Gotta play my hand for what it's worth. I start with a check and the cutoff does not continue betting here. He checks, leading it off to the button who decides to check behind. If one of these players was to bet here, I would have just called instead of check raising. Instead, when the button checks behind, we see the queen of hearts peel off on the river. It's not the diamond we wanted to see, but given the action on the turn, it's pretty likely I do in fact have the best hand. I start with a check once again, and the cutoff and button both follow. I turn over my cards, and the villain in the cutoff had pocket kings. So imagine if there was no ace on the turn, but instead there was a diamond. That would have been pretty nice, and I say that because the button has six, seven of diamonds. Imagine that. No ace on the turn, and a diamond would have been nasty. We'd have probably got the triple up, honestly, in that spot. But instead, we're getting rewarded with that $332 pot, bringing us along to the last hand of the night. Let's see if we can finish this vlog in the right direction. King 10 of clubs from middle position, and I open it up to $25 over a limper. Three players put in the call, leading us four ways to the flop. The flop comes pretty good for us. It comes ace of clubs, king of hearts, 10 of diamonds, and the action's on me. I decided to go for a non-standard $50 bet. Probably could size up a little bit more to the tune of 75 bucks, but that $50 bet works out pretty nicely when everybody puts in the call. Yes, we are still going four ways to the turn. Let's see what it brings in. As if my hand wasn't good enough, the turn now comes the five of clubs. I have two pair and the nut flush draw. Action's on me, there's 305 in the middle and I like a large sizing here. I decided to go $230. Probably could go even a little bit larger, 250 to 275. 
but that's neither here nor there. We're not gonna get three people to call this time. Instead, just the player on the button puts in the call. I still think I'm ahead a large portion of the time here. So when the river card comes, the four of hearts and the actions on me, I wanna go for a large bet here and get a little bit more value. I think I like a bet sizing of 500 to 700 bucks. Instead, I go for a half pot size bet of $350 and the button does not waste any time before snap calling. When he doesn't even think about raising, I'm pretty sure I'm good in this spot. So I confidently turn over my two pair. But yeah, our confidence is shattered when the button turns over a better two pair. Ace 10 that didn't decide to raise on the flop turn or river. Oh well, I kind of think I lost the minimum in that hand. I like the way the villain played that one from the button. He probably got the most from me and he's taking on that $1,500 pot. Unfortunately for us, we can't catch a break. And uh, it's a pot after pot going the opponent's direction. So I call it a night. I rack up my chips and head over to the cage exchanging them for some cold, hard cash. All right, you guys, it wraps up that six and a half hour two five session. We got in for 1500, topped up 1390, up for 925, so a net loss of 1965 in six and a half hours. Not the way I planned. A lot of fun action there. We uh, did that flip with Safine for 700. Then we got in a few spots where uh, maybe we shouldn't have queens versus aces. Maybe I'd fold them free. Maybe I don't bet the turn, I don't know, but definitely stoked that I made the right fold on the turn when he jammed with pocket aces. Ace of diamonds, I was crushed on that spot with no diamond. Oh man, I'm gonna get this hourly up here at the 2.5. I know I can beat this for like $150 to $250 an hour. Right now, we're losing like $160 an hour, so not, not the best over these last two sessions, but we're gonna run it up. Appreciate all the support. If you guys are new, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Appreciate all the support on the videos. Uh, leave a comment down below letting me know if I play bad, if I played good, if I just need to stick with it. And uh, if you guys play a session between now and the next time I post, good luck. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.